I guess my question for you is, you know, how what what was it like, you know, growing up, um, uh, drawing, you know, as a, a youngster. I'm sure, you know, at, at some point growing up, you know, you came to the epiphany that you wanted to draw. So, you know, how did your parents take it, and, and were they very, you know, supportive at that time? You know, when when you you know brought that up to it and revealed that to them. Yeah, I mean, they, my parents were always supportive. Uh, I guess, you know, I don't remember them ever having an issue with it and uh i you know i drew from the time that i was that i could look i mean i know i drew in kindergarten that's the earliest i can remember like doing it because i it would impress my friends you know dinosaurs and stick man wars and all this cars all this stuff um but obviously i must have done it before then right and uh as i grew older and uh you know, my, my parents were always very supportive. And I remember in sixth grade, I used to draw a ton. I, I discovered Frank Brazetta, and I was a big comic book fan. And my dad worked at this company where he could bring me home all this paper. So he would bring me home paper to work on, you know. So those were my sketch pads. And uh, I have tons, reams and reams of that stuff, you know, with covered, littered with... I mean, I drew all the time. I watched TV and, like, sucked in, like, Star Trek and Johnny Quest and all these great things when I was a kid and uh, and and then, and then they were supportive when I was older too I mean they were always supportive so what was that antidote I know you were, you had that interesting antidote that you were talking about um, with, with drawing where it was a, it wasn't necessarily a, it was concerned but maybe not for a different reason oh yeah I mean you know I, I I was into into the genre stuff and action stuff you know when I was pretty young my parents didn't let me watch a lot of like violent stuff at all but you know you you're exposed to it and or maybe I wasn't so much so I just made it up but uh, those I would have like violent drawings in my notebooks and you know guys getting shot and blown apart and, uh, war and all this stuff and my teachers were I think my teachers were a little concerned there might be something wrong with me and my my parents were uh, assured them you know he's fine he's fine it's just he lives in a different world he's not gonna kill any cats you know all right, all right. Well, um, you, you know, you've mentioned on in you know countless interviews, and when that, whenever someone's spoken to you, you've always talked about um, how other people have appreciated your works, particularly with you know directors and and those that you've worked with. Um, what would you say is the thing that you try to capture? What's the thing that you try to capture when when you're drawing? You know, when you're putting a drawing together, because obviously it's something that speaks to people. Yeah, you know that that thing is hard to articulate because it's 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 I don't know, you know, to me it's it's what you'd call it a, I'd call it a passion, you know. And that something that deep thing wells within you and that, you know you it it manifests itself in your work, you know. It, uh, at least I think it does with me. And it's, you know, it's it's there's a kind of a living, there's kind of a vicarious connection, you know, that I have with things when I draw them I make up stories while I'm working on them backstories for characters and I'm always kind of like you know when I'm making when I'm creating this scene this you know a single illustration that tells a story you have to you can't just you have to make up that story in a way you know you have to have it make sense for yourself and to present that in an for me an iconic way you know I was very young exposed to or, or impacted by you know the art of the, the film poster um, and that's always been a huge, you know, and like I mentioned earlier, Frank Frazetta, uh, seeing his, being exposed to his work at an early age, that might be where the blood and guts stuff came from too. Although he didn't draw a lot of blood. It was all suggested. It was all before or after the violence. Implied, yeah. Yeah, implied, exactly. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I really got into that kind of storytelling that create that composition, have the power, you know, of the, of the characters coming through and. A lot of that was male-driven, um, so I, you know, I've a big part of my career was drawing things like The Punisher and Hellblazer and Hellraiser and Star Trek. But you know, I do a lot of stuff with with you know female protagonists as well, and uh, it's 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 all one. But I thought it was funny that for for a long time people didn't think I really was draw girls or whatever, and I'm like. Well, that's why Adam Hughes is here, you know? Like, Adam Hughes is the, I mean, we came up at the same time. I'm the guy who draws gritty, tough, hardcore guys, and he's the guy who draws, like, really awesome, voluptuous women. Together, we're, like, a complete package, but... <laughs>
but uh, yeah, I mean, I I try to do that across the board with with any character, you know, bring that kind of sensibility to it. Okay, uh, so who who aside from uh, the gentleman that, that you spoke of uh, with Frank, who who's another artist that you would say that that uh, inspired you and in, in kind of drove you to you know to to do what you do to, yeah um man you know there were so many uh i mean definitely frazetta was a huge had a huge impact on me uh i mean almost everyone here can say that it doesn't really you, you know when you look at my work that's something you don't you don't see the Fra a frazetta influence in right. there necessarily right. but it's there and i think that listening knowing how frank worked and knowing what when he worked how he felt that's there's a strong connection there i think that I kind of feel like that energy comes from the same place, and uh, but as far as influences, man, there's so many. Mobius is a, is a huge influence. Jean Giraud, who passed away last year. Um, when I first started to learn how to ink, Al Williamson was my teacher. Not that he ever knew that, but I had a book called The Art of Al Williamson, and I learned everything I knew. You know, brush. And it's not like somebody taught me the technique. I kind of looked at it, what he did, and I and I just learned how to do it. Okay. It gave me the in looking at his work gave me the confidence to try it. Um, so Al Williamson, I think, was is definitely a big influence. John Byrne was a big influence on me when I was younger. I wanted to draw like John Byrne. He was like a very popular artist back in the '80s. Um, until I met him, and he turned out to be a complete jerk. But that inspired me not to be like that when I got if I ever got on the other side of the table as a professional I knew that that wasn't the guy I wanted to be so awesome thank uh, you John <laughs> well uh, last but not least you know no one's a stranger to the fact that you and and uh, Mr. James Thomas Jane um, worked together on uh, Raw Studios with the the comics that you have have there um, can you for any of the fans out there that are, f are familiar with all of those comments that you have under under Raw, can you talk about some of the things that you guys are still in the process of working on right now? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're, we put out the, a book called Bad Planet as a six-issue miniseries. We began that journey with a new six-issue miniseries, uh, a follow-up to Bad Planet. Uh, and after one issue, our artist bailed on us. Just because he got another opportunity, you know, we don't we don't pay millions of dollars, but we pay definitely competitively. But he got an offer he couldn't refuse, so he left. And then he ended up coming back and, and agreeing to do a second issue for us. But it left us in the lurch as to what to do. And then in the meantime, we're a boutique company, you know, we're financed by Tom. So if you know he, he got a little stretched, comics don't aren't huge profit, you know, and we're not even trying to, we, all we want to do is break even on them. But uh, it slowed down what we were doing with Bad Planet, which we are going to finish at some, at, you know, we're, we're looking at artists now trying to figure out, you know, who's going to be right to finish this series off. So that's, that's all in the pipeline, but we're also gearing up to shoot a Western film that Tom's directing, which takes an enormous amount of energy and time and attention and focus to do. So... You know, we're, we're wrestling with the fact that that's kind of got to be on the back burner for now, but we're also very determined to, to m move it forward. And, and we also have the ability to make that happen now just with our cash flow. The other thing we're really excited about is a book called The Lycan that we've been working on for a year with a really fantastic artist named Sean O'Connor. It's a very, this is it over here, The Lycan. Um, it's a period piece about hunters who run up against something that is going to hunt them and uh, it's, it's a werewolf story but it's not a werewolf story you've seen before it's, it's uh, the closest thing I could like compare it to might be the 13th warrior um, but I don't remember any werewolves being in the 13th no. <laughs> but it's not it's, it, but that's just the closest thing I can compare it to as a period piece as a you know, as an action experience, um, and then we've uh, we've got Alien Worlds and Twisted Tales. Twisted Tales we're developing for television. Bruce Jones, Twisted Tales. It's oh, awesome. a series of anthology. It's an anthology. It's a series of stories, horror stories, in that ironic ending EC tradition. 
Uh, it's a it's because we did you know that book is a result of Bruce's love affair with uh, the old EC books and uh, and his work on Creepy and Eerie magazine in the 70s, uh, and then Alien Worlds, which is the science fiction anthology, same mo, uh, ironic ending short stories, or the, you know irony or shock or twist endings. Uh, with a science fiction theme. And that's a book that we're working on uh, as we speak. And we've got art from Richard Corbin and William Stout. I mean, the, the work is just amazing. A uh, great artist named Rafa Garas. Um, I'm hoping to maybe, I think I might even do one, you know, a little eight pager, you know, okay. as special. Right. So I'm very, I'm excited about it. It's one of my favorite books. Uh, Alien Worlds and Twisted Tales came out in the 80s from Pacific Comics and then Eclipse. And uh, it had a huge following, and it, it carried on a tradition. And uh, Bruce Jones is a f friend of mine for 15 years, and uh, we were looking for something like that, and Bruce jumped up, jumped aboard. So we're, we're working with one of our heroes. Tom, Tom's a huge fan of Bruce. Uh, it's one of our, like I said, one of our favorite books. So we're very excited. We're going to publish it in a kind of a hardcover collection. It's gonna be like twelve stories in hardcover by the greatest artists. You know, it's gonna be awesome. Wow, awesome! Well, you actually read my mind. I was gonna actually ask you in terms of film. You know what? You know what you'd be working on, but you pretty much you know covered it in terms yeah. of television and film. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tim. Thank, thank you, thank you man. for your time. Appreciate your time. Anytime. <laughs>